afternoon, everybody. This is Bonnie Vandermulen, Training Coordinator for Wisconsin Facets. On behalf of our entire Wisconsin Facets staff, we would like to thank you for joining us today. Today's webinar is entitled Co-Teaching and Specially Designed Instruction, and our presenters today are Seal Kars, Sharon Madsen, and Tracy Elga. Uh, Seal currently works as a student teacher supervisor with Carroll University. In addition, she coaches early educators in the field of special education. She is retired from a full-time teaching in the area of special education um, after 37 years in the classroom. Sharon Madsen currently serves as the educational consultant on the special education team for the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. She has over 15, 14 years of experience teaching general education and special education. Tracy Elger currently serves as the Executive Director of Programs and Services for CISA II. She has over 24 years of experience as both a special education teacher and in administrative positions. While the bulk of her position at CISA II is administrative, she continues to coach districts around the state in co-teaching and specially designed instruction. Steele, Sharon, and Tracy have a shared passion for co-teaching and specially designed instruction. Collectively, they have been creating co-teaching training and resources for the Wisconsin Department of Public Instruction. It gives me great pleasure to introduce to you the three ladies today. Good afternoon. My apologies right off the bat for the tornado siren going off in my background. It is just a practice, so it will go away soon. I want to direct you um, to the first slide here, which just gives you a link to a great resource titled um, Special Education in Plain Language um, for Parents and School Professionals in particular. It is our hope uh, today to provide some information for the following three questions. What is SDI and why is it important? Who can provide SDI? And where your child may receive SDI? Thank you, Seal. Um, before we get started today, we just want to go through the definitions of what specially designed instruction is. And you're going to hear us refer to specially designed instruction as SDI throughout the presentation. On this slide here, this is our federal definition of specially designed instruction. It means adapting as appropriate to the needs of an eligible child under this part, the content methodology or delivery of instruction to address the unique needs of the child that result from the child's disability and to ensure access of the child to the general education curriculum so that the child can meet the educational standards within the jurisdiction of the public agency that apply to all children. Um, another key feature of SDI or specially designed instruction is that it is provided at no cost to parents. Um, our definition in state statute in Wisconsin um, for special education means specially designed instruction regardless of where instruction is conducted that is provided at no cost to the child or the child's parents to meet the unique needs of a child with a disability, including instruction in physical education. Tracy's going to go into that a little bit more in depth on this next slide. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. We'll start off by talking about what is specially designed instruction. And specially designed instruction is individualized and it's individualized for each student to ensure that a student that has an IEP will receive high quality instruction. That's, that's its goal um, at its most general. Um, it's designed to access or address both academic and functional disability related needs. And so when it's developed, it's based on the individual needs to address the student's IEP goals. Um, it's guaranteed to them and it's guaranteed based on um, the specially designed instruction, the federal definition that Sharon just gave you through IDEA. Other students might receive similar instruction, but it's not guaranteed. It's what we give a student when they uh, become eligible for specially for special education. It's also guaranteed um, not only to be given to them, but also that it should be monitored. So special education teachers need to monitor goals and objectives so that kids, we know kids are making progress in the general curriculum, but it doesn't replace the general curriculum. 
um, and that's what supplant means in, in the slide there. It does not replace the universal curriculum, it's a supplement to it. Um, you'll find the specially designed instruction um, in your students or your child's IEP form on the I-4 form in most IEPs. Uh, we know that, that districts use different um, IEP software, but most often it's on that I-4 under the section titled Special Education Specially Designed Instruction. The design and the delivery of, of SDI is the core of special education. If a student doesn't qualify for SDI or doesn't need specially designed instruction, then they're not eligible for special education. So it's one of the things that has to be present in an IEP. Um, specially designed instruction is designed individually for students with IEPs and again is above and beyond what is offered in the grade level curriculum but does not replace it. Um, SDI is the vehicle to ensure students with disabilities receive high quality instruction and services that results in grade level achievement of academic and functional standards, graduation, and then um, eventually meaningful post-secondary outcomes. It is specific to students who qualify for special education services in order to help them master their IEP goals and objectives, as well as to ensure access to and progress in the general education curriculum. SDI can occur in all of the environments that a student with an IEP may appear in during the day, and we'll talk about that in more depth a little later. And it should absolutely be brought into the general education classroom during regular instruction. It can be planned during intervention times. It can be intensive and can be delivered in a one-on-one -on -one or small group situation. And SDI can be and should be supported by other team members and infused throughout the student's learning experiences and environment as it's outlined and described in the IEP. When specially designed instruction is only delivered in one place, like a pullout classroom, for instance, for a short amount of time, it runs the risk of not being generalized to other environments. And what we mean by that is that when they're only given their specially designed instruction in a pullout classroom for a very small amount of time, often what they can do in that classroom isn't shown in the general education classroom. So they can't repeat that performance because it hasn't been generalized. I believe that Sharon is going to go to the next slide and talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I, we have a chart created here and it's not an exhaustive list, but it just gives a few examples of what specially designed instruction could be versus what supplementary aids and services might look like. Um, and the distinction between the two is that with specially designed instruction or SDI, an appropriately licensed teacher provides those services to a student who is receiving special education services. Um, and we get into who can provide those services a little bit later on in our presentation. So with supplementary aids and services, these are the things that, is, um, that enable a student to access uh, the general education curriculum and they can access these supports in the general education classroom or other education related, related settings. And these can be provided by the special education teacher or really any other staff that is supporting that student. So again, just a few examples of what specially designed instruction is. It could be functional communication training, um, whereas the supplementary aid and service might be an assistive technology device that enables that student to use that functional communication. Um, again, SDI could be direct or intensive instruction in mathematics, problem solving, or any other academic um, area. It could also be instruction on how to use a supplementary aid and service, behavioral support equipment, or assistive technology. Again, supplementary aids and services, it's not limited to, but it could include additional or extended time on assignments, tasks, and or assessments. Um, it might include things like fidgets or sensory support. Oftentimes, this is where you may see paraprofessional support listed in your child's IEP or your student's IEP. Um, it could be positive reinforcement of behavior um, or visual schedule. At this point, I just want to check in with you, Bonnie. Are we getting any questions? We don't have any questions at this time. Okay, thank you. I am going to hand it over to Seal to talk about why specially designed instruction is necessary. So SDI 
Thanks, Sharon. SDI is the instruction applied to address academic and functional performance. The definition of functional performance means to address the areas where learners need instruction on how to or how to learn activities of daily living, emotional regulation, coping skills, coping with stress, etc. SDI is what makes special ed special. SDI is instruction intended to close the gap opportunity between a student with a disability and the rest of their peers. We talk about an opportunity gap because what is often missing is a way for students with IEPs to connect with general education. Specially designed instruction teaches students how to make that connection. That's its purpose. The design and delivery of SDI is the absolute core of special education. So a little history, in 1975, the federal law was passed guaranteeing a free and appropriate education, or what we often in the education world acronym is FAPE. It's meant for all children, which stopped a practice of denying education to children who learned differently. In fact, Wisconsin had adopted a similar law prior to this law in 1975. While children are no longer denied entry to school, there was still, and continues to be at times, a widespread cultural belief that once students are identified as needing special education, the best way to provide that education and instruction is in a segregated setting. Now, it is important to understand that a cultural belief is not a legal re requirement nor is it supported by educational research. In fact, the law actually states the preferred place to, for children, for all children to receive all of their education is with their peers. Tracy. Thank you. So now we'll talk about who actually provides specially designed instruction um, to your child or to your student. Um, under IDEA, specially designed instruction is a shared responsibility. The specialist in general is responsible for the actual SDI minutes that are outlined by the IEP team. The general education teacher or other support personnel like um, paraprofessionals or um, other staff that might be in the, in the classroom can then support or provide supplemental instruction to the SDI. In some cases, specially designed instruction may be provided by a reading specialist. However, it's still planned and supported alongside a, gen a special education teacher. So as a reminder, um, part of how to understand what SDI is, is that it's a service. It's not a location or a place. The individual disability related needs of the child determines the frequency, um, how much, the duration, how long, and the location of the specially designed instruction. SDI is then related to the concept of least restrictive environment or LRE. An LRE is discussed during your child's IEP meeting and shifts the conversation to where SDI should occur. Um, so not only are we talking about what SDI is happening. When we talk about LRE, we talk about where it's going to happen. And there are a range of options that schools should have available for learners. We call this service delivery. IEP teams should discuss whether supports can be brought into the general education classroom first so that students don't have to leave to learn. If it's determined by the team that services can't be provided in the general education classroom, you can advocate that your child is removed from the general ed education classroom for the least amount of time. Again, that directly relates to LRE or least restrictive environment. And then ensure that the IEP discussion occurs about how new skills will be supported and generalized into the classroom. When a student with an IEP stays in the classroom, the SDI that is provided to them can also be provided to other students in the class who may have learning needs but aren't actually eligible for an IEP. We call this incidental benefit. For example, um, a student with an IEP might require specially designed instruction in reading comprehension. 
the special education teacher may co-teach with the general education teacher and instruct students on how to use a reading comprehension strategy. Although this was meant to address the IEP goal, other learners in the class are now, benef are now benefiting from this strategy instruction as well. And then for additional information on incidental benefit, you can read the letter to Couliard, who is, that's linked here. Um, before we move on to SEAL, um, talking about how we organize learners, I know that it, it's a lot of information to pack into a couple slides. Just want to check if there's any questions on least restrictive environment or um, the SDI. Um, there's one question um, which addresses um, the virtual learning option that was available and now that schools are going back how can you make sure that a student will be um, educated in the least restrictive environment if they're not able to join their peers again in school? Sharon, you look like you were out of Yeah, no, that's a good question. I'm, I'm not 100% um, sure that we have a good answer for that yet because um, things are just ever changing and ever evolving with the pandemic. Um, you know, if, in students who choose to remain virtual in different districts, the um, model for virtual instruction may look differently as well. Um, and I, I'm not sure, Tracy or Seal, if you've seen anything um, in the field currently of how districts are tackling that. Yeah, you know, I think I, I think the the hard part about this question is that there are so many different models right now of virtual instruction. So I would say if you are in a school where all of the students, not just your student that has an IEP, if all of the students are in a virtual environment then by definition they're in the least restrictive environment because it's what's being given to all students. In that kind of a situation, you're still going to want that your student with an IEP, that they should have access to the full educator team and not just um, only seeing their special education teacher, for example. They should also have access to the general education teacher as well as access to their peers because you know in that learning environment, there are still opportunities for breakouts and things like that, that they could be talking with um, their, their peers. Now, I'm saying that, also understanding that confidentiality laws in districts differ greatly. So where some, some um, districts allow kids to go into breakout rooms together, others do not. So it really is, um, it's a complicated question and it's a good one. And um, I guess the how what I would offer to you is in an IEP meeting, finding out that they still have access to all of the team members, you know, the the teaching team members, as well as still having some access to kids in the classroom. But again, that is completely run by those, those confidentiality um, laws in districts, and every district is different. Hey, thank you very much. That's all I have at this time. Okay, so we'll move on. Thanks, Tracy and Sharon. Um, how do we organize learners? Well, we have chosen to give you some information on Shelley Moore. Uh, she's originally from Edmonton and now she's in Vancouver, British Columbia. She is a highly sought after teacher researcher consultant and she's quite a storyteller. And she has worked with districts um, around the country, both in Canada and the United States. Uh, her research and her work um, has been featured at national and international conferences, and it's based on theory and effective practices. She's quite passionate about um, inclusion, special education curriculum, and then evolves that into doing a lot of professional de development. Um, a colleague of Moore's, suggested that the circle dots could be used to depict the evolution of inclusion. So this allows for the process to ask better and deeper questions like, where are we at now? So if you look at that, you can look at even where are you at now in terms of the progression of inclusion? And what is our next step? So how do you get from where you are to where you wanna be? And when she asked her audience to think about how we organize our learners, she suggests an option beyond what we currently practice and what we understand. 
She challenges us to consider that all learners are unique. She challenges us to think about diversity, acknowledging that each learner has a unique set of strengths, needs, and preferred learning style. Thus, she created the last circle that has joined the evolution process in the last year, year and a half. There is a video that we have linked here and she also has, she calls five more minutes um, that she releases. Um, we as a team would encourage you to um, dig into her a little bit deeper um, if you wanna understand the process of inclusion and how that could work for, for, for your children. So we're gonna move now into how um, we actually provide SDI. And so when we consider how to provide specially designed instruction, we start from the assumption that everything a learner needs happens in the general education learning environment. Um, to make the SDI authentic and to ensure that those skills are generalized into other environments, it should be delivered to the maximum extent appropriate with peers in the general education setting. One way to do this is by co-teaching. And I know you heard Bonnie say that that's one of the things that Sharon and Seal and I and I work together on at DPI is creating um, some guidance around co-teaching and how to co-teach. Um, in a co-taught classroom, SDI is co-planned with the general education teacher and provided in the general education classroom. Um, SDI really bridges the gap between deficit skills and grade level skills, and it provides that access to the general curriculum. A few slides ago, we talked about um, service delivery for learners with IEPs. The co-teaching model of service delivery is really the only service delivery model that guarantees that students stay in the general education classroom to receive SDI. And again, um, I'll just pause again, Bonnie. Are there any questions that have come in? No questions at this time. Okay, and I, I think before we share our resources slide and kind of wrap up, um, I'm wondering from our audience, if they're able to type in the chat, um, if you are a teacher and you're part of a co-teaching team, or if you are a parent and you have a child in a co-taught environment, what are some of the benefits that you've seen to that model? And Bonnie, I don't think I have access to the chat. If you're able to read those off as they come in, maybe we'll just take a minute or two. Yes, and as they're coming in, I did get a question if I could sure. go share that with you. When a child is removed from the classroom due to disability issues regulation, for example, and placed in a separate room by themselves with an educational assistant, is the educational assistant able to provide the instruction and what can the educational assistant actually do? So I'm, we're talking about a paraprofessional, it sounds like. Um, they are not, they can support any specially designed instruction. They should not be the person who is um, introducing that specially designed instruction. Um, that specially designed instruction, again, can be provided by the people listed um, on our slide. So it would be your special education teacher, speech and language pathologist, um, and in some cases, you know, if you're receiving specially designed instruction, a reading teacher? Good question. And actually at this time, either our chat is not working correctly or we haven't had many people respond, but we didn't get many responses to your request. I'm also wondering, um, if there is something that, that you were really hoping to hear about SDI that maybe we didn't cover, because I know that, that when we put this um, presentation together, because it is, I mean, I, I've honestly spent an entire day teaching teachers how to provide specially designed instruction and to have an hour, I wanna make sure that we went deep enough, but not that we overwhelmed anybody. So is there something you're still wondering about that we didn't actually touch on in our presentation. What we did get was a follow-up question to the one that was just asked before. And um, the person posing the question asked, 
um, is it acceptable to send the classroom work with the child as they leave the classroom? So in the, in the student's IEP, I mean, we talked about that I-4, there is a box that defines the number of minutes that that child should be receiving specially designed instruction from a special education teacher, reading specialist, you know, that that's that person with the teaching license. After that, if homework is sent with a paraprofessional or um, if the paraprofessional is supporting, that's okay. It's those minutes that are in the IEP that absolutely have to be provided. So whether it's it's you know 45 minutes a day in reading or or whatever it is, that must be provided by a specialist. But other people can support the, that goal and objective or do that homework assist throughout the day. I guess I'm also wondering if it's um, an issue of regulation or deregulations that it is causing the student have to leave the classroom. It seems counterproductive to be, to be sending that school, that classroom work at that time, because what is the purpose of removal? Um, I do have a couple of other questions for you ladies. Um, one says, my son was in a co-taught class for two years in the middle school and this year in high school, he made extreme gains in middle school and that model was so much more beneficial than all his elementary years. His needs were more readily met and he actually had more access to special education teacher that way. So that was a comment as a follow-up. And then another question we had is, um, this person did send an email to Sharon this morning, um, not realizing that you were going to be presenting today. And the question is, is a teacher um, for the deaf and hard of hearing um, considered a special education teacher and therefore can provide specially designed instruction? So I did look this up and I was going to check with our um, licensing department too. Tracy, I see you nodding your head. Did you have some insight into this? Yeah, because one of the, one of the ways that we qualify students um, as eligible for special education is under deaf and hard of hearing. So, so if that student's eligibility is because of a hearing loss, that DHH teacher becomes the special education teacher. And as an extension, it, it's one of the, it's one of the eligibility um, criteria in in IDEA. So yes, that the the specially designed instruction can be given by a DHH teacher, and they are a licensed certified special education teacher. So that would be my understanding. Yeah. So Maybe. then, as a, as a follow up, would this uh, deaf of hard of hearing teacher become the major uh, case manager for this particular child? So, okay, that's a really good question um, because we often have a student. Let's say, um, let's say the student initially qualified as a student with a specific learning disability, right? And so the 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 specific learning disability is on the I-4 as the um, specially designed instruction, maybe in the area of reading. We often add related services. So a speech and language therapist can be a related service. A DHH person can be a related service. A physical therapist can be a related service. In that instance, the primary person would be the um, the teacher, the, the cross-categorical special education teacher would be the case manager. Um, if the, the special education, the only special education that the student is receiving is deaf and hard of hearing services, and that's the specially designed instruction, then yes, that would be the case manager. The only time that that would change, and, and I don't work for DPI, so Sharon, if I'm saying something that's wrong, but, but I was a special education director for many years, um, the only time that that ever changes is if the school contracts with a deaf and hard of hearing teacher through a service like a CESA. In that instance, even though DHH is the only thing on the, the student's IEP because they're considered an itinerant teacher, we often see a cross-categorical teacher 
who becomes um, the case manager then and supports that DHH teacher who probably only is in the district a couple times a week. So again, it's really specific to what's in your in the student's IEP as to who that case manager is. So Sharon, did you wanna add anything? Um, no, that sounds, I was in that role once as a case manager for a visually impaired student. Um, my license is cross-categorical. He did not receive any um, specially designed instruction from me. That was all provided by the visually um, impaired person, teacher. Um, and then I really just managed the IEP meetings and the paperwork side of things. Okay, thank you all. That is the end of our questions at this point. All right. Um, so just to wrap up, we had wanted to share some resources with you. Um, if you're curious to learn more about co-teaching um, and what it means in Wisconsin, you can visit that first web page. Um, this is a work in project. This is what Tracy Seal and I have been working on, um, and it was started by a fellow um, DPI employee who's now retired to errands, um, and she had kind of gotten the ball rolling on this. Um, there will be five. Uh, presentations or modules, I think probably by the fall, they should all be posted and ready to go. Um, the second resource, which is also available in PDF, is the role of special education services and an equitable multi-level system of supports. Um, we've also included that video clip by Shelley Moore, The Evolution of Inclusion. Another PDF you can reference is that letter to Cooliard, which talks about incidental benefit and special education in plain language is also had also been sent out as a PDF. Um, and again, Seal talked about that earlier in the presentation. It's just a really great resource and it puts things in just very um, straightforward terms. It's also very interactive where you can click on links right within that document if you're using the one on the website. Um, we do have a, another question that came in that probably is part for you and part for me. And the question was, how do we figure out how to open the links that the presenters are sharing and that they were interested in the video itself and um, not sure how to open it? So um, if you download the um, handouts, you should be able um, to link them and be able to open those links on your computer. If for any reason you are having a difficult time in doing so, I can send you a separate link that you'll be able to utilize to be able to access the information um, that is hyperlinked in the pre presentation. And ladies, did you have any comments about that? I think you covered it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And at this time, I don't see any other, oh, here, the person wanted to say thank you to the presenters and thanks for the technical help. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, at this time, I don't have any other questions. Do either of you, or any of you have any um, other comments to make? Well, I think that is it for today. Um, again, feel free to reach out via email to any one of us if something um, pops up for you later on or you're looking for other resources, we'd be happy to help. Okay, thank you. And if each of you wouldn't mind just repeating your email addresses for those that are interested, we would appreciate that. Sure, I'm um, Seal Cars, and you can reach me easiest at C-E-I-L-C-A-R-S-E -E at gmail.com. I'm Sharon Madsen. My email is Sharon.Madsen, M-A-D-S-E-N, at dpi.wi.gov. And then my email address would be through CISA2. So it's my first name, T-R-A-C-Y, and then dot Elger, E-L-G-E-R, and that's at CISA2. Org. Hey, thank you, uh, the three of you, Tracy, Sharon, and Seal, for your presentation today. I know that I learned a lot. I'm sure that those in attendance did as well. 
This will conclude our webinar for today. We'd like to thank all of you for joining us today. Please be reminded that Wisconsin Facets has over 100 scheduled trainings and webinars for the year 2021. Please feel free to check out our website calendar and register for any of those upcoming trainings that may be of interest to you. And please watch for that short evaluation that will be coming your way after our live presentation today. Um, that short evaluation will help us in our planning for webinars in the future. So thank you again, um, Tracy, Sharon, and Seal, and thank you all for joining us. Have a good rest of your day. We appreciate your attendance. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Bye-bye.